This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and this week... <gasps> Actually, neither of my regular co-hosts are here this week. <laughs> uh, Misha is taking some time off to to take care of some things in her life. You know, she's just she's got to step back. You know, take care of some issues and 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 I wish her speedy recovery, speedy getting well, and everything. And, and I look forward to her coming back. She's not going to be gone for good. She's just gone for a little while. Just take a step back and breathe. That's fine. You know, every time you know, you when you deal with stuff like this, sometimes you do need some time off. And Holly, right now, she she's got a buttload of busy going on, but uh, she should be back for the next episode. So I have brought in a special guest, and her name is Bex, also known as the Feminine Miss Geek, which who can be found over at femininemissgeek.wordpress.com. Hello, Bex. Hello, thank you for having me. It is my pleasure. So uh, before we get started today, uh, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Oh, well, uh, my name is Bex. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, I blog occasionally, not as much as I'd like to, but you know how it is, uh, over at the Feminist Geek, and it's just talking about the intersection of girly stuff and nerdy stuff and just stuff that I like, pretty much, <laughs> and um, occasionally how feminism and geekery and internet culture relate to one another so yeah that's me <laughs> yeah and from what i'm seeing it I'm, I'm looking at the site now i'm wanting to i was almost wanting to say you hey, you had different ones but i'm only seeing ones by you um i know you have i've seen you tweet some other things that have guest writers or, or other writers on it or something or yeah i i i've had other people writing for me they haven't written lately so it's just me at the moment yeah so so it's it's really good and and I'm looking at it now and I'm looking at some of the stuff and it looks really neat. Really good. Oh, thank you. And and holy shit TARDIS ring. I know, right? I want a TARDIS <laughs> ring. <laughs> it, see, I, I started this because there's there's lots of geek sites out there, but when I started it, I think like in two thousand six, there wasn't really any girly stuff on it. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, you'll they'll show like products and it'll be like a man's t shirt or a, a booby figurine, which is all well and good. But I was hoping for something that's, you know, I want to see nail polish, nail art, and jewelry, and girly tees, along with my general geekery, too, so. Yeah, and, and that works. <laughs> there you go. Ah, so again, it's femininemissgeek.wordpress.com is where you can find her stuff. Um, but now we now we, we are returning to these guys again. We, we, pl we, we took the piss out of them for a few episodes back in December or whatever. And these guys are Return of Kings. For those who don't know, um, take all the worst MRAs you can think of, put them put them together on a site, and 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 tune their brains to where they take their their stuff too seriously. That even your run of the mill MRAs are like, dude, that's some fucking bullshit. You got Return of Kings. <laughs> yeah. yeah, these guys. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like to pretend they don't exist as much as possible. <laughs> Live in my little fantasy world where there's nobody who really thinks like this. Yeah, which unfortunately, if if you pay attention to the circles that we do, yeah, they unfortunately yeah. Exi exist, and and they and they resist. You know, they resist the equality because they they think it's a threat to their manhood, but it's not. It, it's it's really not. I mean, you know, what's a threat to your manhood or quote unquote manhood, if you want to call it that, because I know there are some some penis holders that identify as women. So, you know, that's fine. Sharp knife. Exactly. I think that's really the only thing you have to worry about if you only define your manhood as your penis. Exactly. That that is that is exactly where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it would work if if you if you have a a a. a a, you know, a vagina holder identifying as male. I don't know what would be a threat to that masculinity, though. If, if there was... Uh, that, well, I think that's that's a whole other issue of, of gender identity. Yeah, but... But there, there's a great article by uh, Dr. Nerdlove, who I'm sure you're familiar with. He's a great, great uh, blogger about relationship with nerds, and he has a great article called The uh, the Fragile Masculinity, I think maybe it's called. Hmm. How How, you know, it's masculinity is something that can be taken away from you. There's always this constant threat that men have to live with that they're going to somehow lose what makes them a man. Right. And it's so easy to take it away from you. So they have to constantly 
reclaim their masculinity and define themselves as a man. Yeah, and and I admit, over the years, I I, I have fallen into that. Sadly, you know. That's that's all right. But I, but I think I think all men do. Right. You know, I mean, in, in, we are all products of this society. We all fall for it for a while. Yeah, and and I try not to. Now, I I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Somebody out there will probably be watching. Well, no, you did this last time. It's like, <laughs> it was like, yeah, I probably did. I I. I tend to have memory problems when it comes to that, but odds are if somebody's pointing it out to me, I, odds are I probably did it. I mean, it, it's not so bad to where I remember, to where I forget, you know, that I've done it, it, but it is bad enough to where I don't remember the details sometimes, which mm-hmm. is kind of weird. It's like I, I can, I'm pretty sure whether or not, you know, if if you accuse me of something and if I'm and if I really did it, I can probably, you know, I could probably dig into the subconscious a little bit, and be like. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think he's right. <laughs> sounds like <laughs> sounds like something I would say. But uh, one thing that 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 I am definitely against nowadays are are the you know you've heard of the guys that that have like the no fat chicks policy. Yes. Yeah, I I hate that. And and you know what? In I haven't. I, I will admit again that's one of those things I'm ashamed to. I might have had maybe in high school. Right. I, I, see, there's a, there's a, a sticky situation here. Is you might not be attracted, physically attracted, sexually attracted to someone of a certain body type, and that's that's not what the issue is. It's it's basing a, a woman's value mm-hmm. as a human being on her weight. Right. And you know what? I mean, you know, yeah. Just because a woman is larger size, I mean, hell, look look at. Just, just look at a couple of my co-hosts. I mean, they have pictures of them out there. They are not exactly light women, but they have no less of a value than somebody who is, you know, who who is a statuesque, six foot tall, double D cup stunner. You know, you know, right. they, they, none of, neither of them are worth more than the other, and they shouldn't be in anybody's eyes. And you know, that's one of those things society has to work towards. As a whole, and right, and that just that that buys into the, the the belief that a woman's value is in her appearance. Her appearance is first and foremost the most important thing about her. Yeah, and and that is before not before anything true. else. No, and 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 me me being on this show, and 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 I've admitted, you know, I am I am a little bit on the the really overly sexual side. I sexualize a lot, but I still understand. Yes. That just because I want to bang a woman doesn't mean that she's any less or more of a person. That just right, and there's, that's something that, I want to do with her. Right, and that's another overlap of another issue of the difference between sexualization and sexual objectification. Mm-hmm. They are not the same thing. They're very different thing. And 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 uh, judging a woman by her body that's objectification. Yeah. Finding a woman sexually attractive but still recognizing that she's a human being that's just sexualization. There's there's a d- definite difference there. Yeah. And just oh, so now 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 that we've kind of danced around it a little bit, we, I don't wanna. I know, but we must. Oh, this is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. Yes. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. I've steeled myself. Oh, her body is ready, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and so is mine. So what what we're poking at this time is an article written by Get It Going over on ReturnOfKings.com. Um, he can't put his real name on this. Well, no, of course not. No. <laughs> uh, and see, there's another difference between me and them. Yes, I do go by Gomer, but if you look at my Twitter, my real name is on that. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, Mine too. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, this article is Six Reasons Why Fat Women Are Defective. Right. Because... <sighs> You know, because you know, fat on other places of your body make you less of a person, make you make you not as attractive, or or make you whatever. And I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go with the sexual slant on this one. And guess what? Just because a woman has some extra fat that you may not find attractive or anything, you know what? You're missing out. <laughs> Seriously, because I I I have been with smaller women. I've been with larger women, and both of them, both 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 ends of the spectrum here, can be just as passionate in bed. I like a bigger guy. There you go. See, I do more more guy. cuddle. Yeah, 
more to cuddle, more to love, more more to grope and 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 and, and everything like that. So it, slap around, yeah, why not? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's just it's the word choice is defective. It's not our you know our ugly or unattractive or nasty. It's defective. There's something wrong with them. Yeah, and there's not unless there's, there's like a oh, legitimate what? health problem with it. There is nothing wrong with it. Even if it was a health problem, it's not defective. Right. As these people are defective air quotes that you can't see because it's a podcast. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. We, we're done beating around the bush. It's time to just just, just dive right in. Do it. Do it. It's like a Band-Aid. Yes. Being a reader of Return of Kings, I'm going to assume you're at least somewhat as aware as I am of the current trend of the ugly delusion that is fat acceptance. Okay, I need to put on a different voice to differentiate. I'm sorry. Okay. And the common and increasing problem of obesity <laughs> in Western countries. Fat shaming week was a gas was like a gasp of fresh air. After- okay, pause real quick. Fat shaming week was when they attacked larger women on Twitter and made them feel horrible about themselves with this belief that they were doing some sort of Social justice, I guess, perversion of social justice, helping women by telling them they're terrible, like negging them, negging women yeah. constantly yeah. for a week, and, for a week. Yeah, and you know what? I just recently learned that the term ne- – you know, I've known what negging is. I just recently put the term to what it actually does together uh, with with help of – with help from my, my wonderful girlfriend. <laughs> so, okay, that was, that was Fat Shaming Week where they just uh, – attacked women and told them they were worthless yeah. fat slobs yeah you'll but, never you'll never have yeah. a boyfriend says says somebody to like my ex-girlfriend who at the time she was rather uh, you know kind of heavy set not not like the ones that that they would most likely be attacking but she was still heavy set and guess what she had a boyfriend in fact she had an opportunity to have two but you know that's a whole different story point is just because you're fat doesn't make you worthless and it doesn't mean nobody wants you mm. All right. So, uh, again, Fat Shaming Week was like a gasp of fresh air after having run across the barrage of pro-fat and fat ugly feminist rants on the internet. (laughs) And there she goes. (laughs) Sorry. Here in the United States, my eyes have to suffer torture on a daily basis (laughs) by seeing fatties everywhere I go. You poor thing. Thing. Oh, let me get my tiny violin. Oh shit! Oh, oh shit! I I I I accidentally crushed my tiny violin. I'm sorry. I can't the play the tiny suffer, violin for you. The suffering. This poor, good to go or get it going. Yeah. Poor thing. Suffering. Sorry. So much <laughs> suffering. I mean, it's like it's not like you can't just turn away and 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 put your nose into something your eyes else. Out. That'll help. You poor thing. Yeah. I mean, and and, and to take it on it's that, you know. Worse. To look at these women and objectify them, the, it's it's he has no choice in the matter. I know it, it would be like me complaining about old guys wearing speedos. You know, I could just look away. Yeah, they, they, I I I find the look kind of like and everything, but I can look away. I'm not going to damn him for it. I'm not going to shame him for it. I'm just going to mm-hmm. look over the way, look over away, try not to have a visible reaction. I I I, I sometimes fail at that. And just just look away, you know. That's all. That that's that's all you need to do. And especially here in the Southeast United States, where fried foods and shitty clothing reign supreme. Oh God, you're in my part of the country. God damn it. I'm sorry. It's depressing to see some of the moderately attractive or even outright cute women I went to high school with who've let themselves go and consequently have swollen and lost a large portion of what made them desirable women. I don't know, dude. I'm, 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 okay, uh, for, the, for the sake of this, I'm going to take the opposite, the opposite end here and say, you know what, I would consider that an upgrade. Because <laughs> if the kind of women you're attracted to are the are the real bone skinny anorexic type women that seriously have a problem and have a, a problem with nourishment, I'll well, be careful there. I know I am I'm I'm trying to be as careful as possible. <laughs> but the point is, if if they started from that particularly brand of of unhealthy thin, then then putting on the weight like that, I I, I think that would be an improvement. He's just admitting that the only thing he finds attractive in a woman is her body. Yeah, that's it. No, I mean, if you if you know if if you want to look at women and and, and you know 
you want to look at women and enjoy women with you know by just excuse me ooh it is a real podcast now uh, but if you want to enjoy women based on their looks alone you have you have all of these modeling magazines you have porn because you know to just watch porn just porn itself all you have to do yeah, is don't do interact with real women just just look at flickering lights on a screen and re- leave the rest of us alone yes you'll be fine yes and 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 for the love of all things sanity if if you enjoy your porn and and you are one of and you're a guy like this get it going character is being so far don't interact with porn stars it's not going to end well for you uh it it's it just not <laughs> uh but that's a whole other topic for another thing <laughs> mm. They are distorted renditions of their former selves. And it seems the trend towards fat being the new normal is growing, when in fact it is a celebration of broken women. Here's why fat women are defective. Oh, here we go. Uh, And remember, these are six reasons. Six reasons. Why he thinks fat women are defective. Keep in mind that he doesn't doesn't say why he thinks. He just states Where's his picture, by the way? Huh? I want to see what he looks like so I can judge him accordingly. Oh, nice. Here's a picture of Don Knotts. This is his picture. Of course. And you, you're going to make – yeah, you're using – you are using Don Knotts as your picture, dude. You fucking – I mean, I mean if you're a fan of him, fine. You know, There's nothing wrong with being a fan of him. He's a great actor. But uh, yeah, to use his picture to help promote your stuff, no. You, you suck. Uh, he even talks about the importance of working out, dressing better, and self-improvement, but he's not going to show a picture of himself. Oh, gee. Yeah, I admit, I don't have very many pictures of myself to show out there, but at least the artwork that's out there that represents me <laughs> looks like me. <laughs> Maybe he is Don Knotts. Uh, Don Knotts back from the grave. and uh, Oh, I hope not. Uh, uh. No, Mr. Limpet, no. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so number one, they're full of rationalization and denial. Obesity is an undesirable trait. I don't know. Ah, uh, this this is, is an undeniable fact, he says. Right. Can we swear on this podcast? Fuck yeah, we can swear on this okay, podcast. Okay, fuck that. Rubens, the, the Venus of Villendorf. There's been numerous... Examples of art throughout history of larger women being seen as desirable, as sexy, as as wanted. It's not an undeniable fact. There are plenty of men today who find large women incredibly attractive. Yeah. Fuck you. Exactly. Fuck you. I'm one of them. Fuck you. I'm one of them. Josh Hadley is one of Me them. Me too. You know, it's like, hey, you know. Uh, one characteristic of big girls I have noticed somewhat consistently is the need to rationalize their condition and their lack of self-control. Some of the more typical and likewise overused excuses seen are, I have a trip of an XXXX condition, insert excuse as you deem fit, glandular disorder, great, ignore the impact of a proper low-calorie diet, or play the genetics card, nice. Well, guess oh what? Some women are doing the proper low calorie diets. Some women are exercising and working out more. Some there women are a number of Olympians who would be considered overweight. They are the peak physical condition. They are in the Olympics, but they look larger and a lot of it's muscle, a lot of it's just mass that they need for their sport. They are healthy as all get out. Yeah. And they are not rail thin. Exactly. And and here's the thing though. You know, muscle if, if I'm remembering my science correctly, <laughs> it, 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 I believe it is denser than fat. It is. Which is why us fat folk, we can float in the water better than you muscle heads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and not, not to mention the, 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 the idiocy of uh, sometimes your lifestyle, if you, if you have – here's the P word. If you are privileged enough to have a lifestyle where you can afford healthy food, if you can afford the time and money to go to the gym – Great. Not everybody has that option. They've probably got some genetic in in them to begin with. If he's going to dismiss genetics, whatever. But your parents were fat. You're probably going to come out fat too. You're growing up with habits, and then you know you don't have access to healthy foods. There's there's areas of the country known as food deserts Mm -hmm. because there is no grocery store within walking distance because a lot of these people aren't able to afford a car either if they can't afford a healthy diet. 
Yeah. So they've got that working against them. Mm -hmm. uh, various medical conditions. Um, the Frogman is a famous example. He's overweight, but he has a, you know, a diagnosed disorder that does not give him energy to burn off his excess weight and he gets constant shit for it and i feel so bad for him because i love that guy to death he looks he looks great i'd cuddle with him and no problem yeah but th th there are there are reasons for for overweight and this there's this belief in our society that it's laziness and that's it can be overcome like that just get off your ass and do it some of these people suffer from depression some of these people have other mental disorders some people have any a number of physical orders disorders that make it difficult for them to just get off their ass and go exercise it's not that easy and to simplify this very complex issue down to get off your ass and start working out is so ignorant and narrow-minded that i want to strangle him exactly and 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 i'm going to say it with this i'm going to say this if you want to have that mindset for your own self mm -hmm. if you direct it against yourself that's fine that's on you don't be trying to put this onto everybody else you think should have the same kind of lifestyle as you because guess what? Not all of us are going to have that. You brought up people you know, having like depression or whatever. There's also people with fibromyalgia. I, I have two really good friends who have fibromyalgia, and, and of course – you know, you you can't walk with that shit. I've mm -hmm. I've seen them both try and walk, and 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 while they do a good job of hiding the pain or, or they're taking stuff for the pain or whatever, when it's a bad day, you know it. You see it in their faces. It's like, no, I don't wish this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I am imagining, and 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 uh, Holly, when when she comes back, she hears this. She could probably verify whether or not this is accurate. But I am imagining trying to walk on your legs when you have fibromyalgia would be like constant having somebody constantly stepping on your toes all the time with 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 spikes made made of pure titanium that just dig through and 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 and, and it just feels like everything is just being Ugh. you know I, I I could be inaccurate you know Holly can Holly if you're listening you can tell me if that's at all anywhere near accurate oh it's just an excuse is what it is right you know because, <laughs> and I bet you this is the same kind of guy if he was sick or if he was injured he would have expect somebody to baby him <laughs> I know this Probably. my dad has been in that position he's gotten better but he has been in that position <laughs> excuses it's dealing with the reality of your situation and and deciding where you want to focus your energy you know i think you should focus your energy on you know your 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 mental well-being your your physical well-being before you start worrying about your your cosmetic well-being i guess i don't know what better word it, there is for it yeah uh, anyway so mm. <laughs> real women have curves a nice combination of denial and rationalization attempting to push the propaganda that beauty is defined not necessarily by that of a woman with a classic shapely hourglass figure but attempting to gloss over saggy tits flabby <laughs> arms disproportionately large buttocks and a stomach that hangs over the belt line oh my god all right i, I do have an issue with real women have curves because that's almost you know saying skinny women aren't real women yeah and i can agree but, with that but fuck you yeah. Saggy tits. Saggy tits. Saggy tits. Okay, that's not just fat. That's an issue of saggy tits. That's fucking gravity. All right? And if you start losing weight, too, your tits are going to sag because your tits are going to shrink. That's the first thing to go when you lose weight, gentlemen. Yeah, pretty much. If you start losing weight, you lose your tits. Before anything else, boom, they're gone. Yeah, and this does apply to man boobs, too, I believe. <sighs> Flabby <laughs> arms. There's not a whole lot that you can do with that as you age. Disproportionately large buttocks. Fuck you. Everybody carries their weight differently. I don't have tits. I have a big bonkadonk. So if I start losing weight, I'm going to be a flat chested with a big ass. It's it's the way my body is shaped. It's the way a lot of <laughs> a lot of people's bodies are shaped to have large buttocks. It's our bone structure, and it's where the weight is carried. There's shit all we can do about it. And the stomach that hangs over the butt line... Fuck you. What if she had a kid and she's got all this skin hanging off of her? There's not much you can do about excess skin. Again, you lose a freaking weight. You got skin left behind. There's nothing you can do about it. That's not plastic surgery. And that's not an option for anybody. Fuck you. Exactly. And you're you're going – this guy is seriously going to, to, to talk down about big asses? Really? 
Really, dude? Does he not know how, how bodies work? He's never seen a woman. He's never touched a woman. He has no idea how that anatomy works. That's what I'm going with. Yeah, the only the only you can Photoshop seen. in real life when you lose weight, I guess. Just you know, trim off that excess skin after you have a baby. It's easy. No, that's genetics right there. It's that's all those weight loss ads. You know what they do in those weight loss ads, right? They find they find women who were bodybuilders to begin with who had the genetic makeup to look ripped and has you know the perfect hip to waist ratio to begin with. That she has a baby goes much her to leave, and immediately she goes back to the gym and gets back to her her body. That's genetics. That she is able to do that because of her genes. Mm -hmm. They don't get real regular people with nine to five jobs, four kids to deal with for these, you know, amazing transformations. There's there's an episode of bullshit that covered this exact thing about how much bullshit this whole weight loss. Uh, what's the word I want? Uh, all these weight loss commercials showing the, just the commercials. The whole in the whole industry, weight loss industry, mm -hmm. is bullshit. It's not. You can't just pop back into shape after popping out kids. That's bullshit. It's how they stand, how it's lit. I could I could stand. I'm, I'm not skinny, but I could stand and have my stomach hang over my belt. Or I can stand up straight and make it look like I'm flat bellied. I can get the thigh gap if I turn my feet the right way. It's all bullshit. Yeah, pretty much. And and you know what? If you if you really want to go to a gym, you want to go work out, fine. That's yes. your right. That That's your thing. But don't don't think it's going to be just this. It's not what you're going to see on TV. That that's mm -hmm. the biggest thing to take away from that. Um, behaving as if they are sexually attractive, good old fashioned <laughs> pretending to be sexy and in demand, dude. Let me let me count. Let's see. I think I am up to nineteen different sexual partners at this point. Yes, I know it's a bit TMI, but you know what? If you've listened to my shows before, this is nothing new. <laughs> so I am up to 19 <laughs> right now. I would say I've probably had more larger women than I've had smaller women at this point. You know, just just on a race, just just first first guess here. And you know what? There's a reason what? why I had sex with those larger women. I found them attractive. I found them sexy. If if not for one thing, if for another thing, it's more. There is more than just looks that can turn somebody on. I am no exception to this. Says the guy who will look at pretty much any woman and think, you know what, you know, if if sex was to happen, I would not turn her down. This is this is the guy. This is the same guy who says that. So you know, if it's not looks, it's something else. I am just... It's, just, it's also behaving as if they are sexually attractive as, as something wrong. How dare you be comfortable in your body and want to wear clothes that look good on you or makeup or lingerie? How dare you be confident and sexually attractive to yourself, mm -hmm. madam? I know, right? Oh, my God. If Don't fat women are sexually it? attractive, then we won't have it. We can't be their desperate fucks. <gasps> oh, my God. I think I just stumbled onto it. That's why oh, they want no. these fat women to stay fat. And, they want to, pity fucks. Yes. That's what they want. They all want pity fucks. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. That means I've cracked this nut, Goomer. Yes, I have. And, oh, God, I just cracked something about my past self, too. Oh, <laughs> oh. Oh, I feel I, I feel I feel ashamed of my past behavior now. That's okay. You'll learn from it and you grow. Yes. <laughs> Discounting the harm done to health due to heavy weight. Dude, there are people heavier than me that are as healthy as a horse. Mm -hmm. There are people and that just, are and they might than... also be completely aware of the health issues. Yeah. I mean, I, I admit I can't really afford to go for a checkup at this point. And by the way, I tried to get assistance for health care and couldn't get it. Government. Mm. Um, but that's a whole other thing. But I'm sure if I went to the doctor, I would, he would probably point out something that I would probably need to change besides my weight because I probably should. And and you know what? Going back to the whole you know reasons why, for one, it's hard to get a little bit motivated, especially in this humid Florida heat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, I don't know anybody who wants to who, – who gets the motivation to go out and just, you know, step out and immediately be drenched in soup. <laughs> it's just yeah. – no. Mm. And by the way, that was just the first item. That was the first item. That was we it. We have five more. Yes. <clears throat> but I think we'll be repeating ourselves a bit. Yeah, probably. 
But hey, you know what? If, if he's going to repeat himself, so can we. <laughs> Number two, they're wholly apathetic and lack motivation. Oh, yeah, right. Um, a basic truth I have discovered over the years is this. We only pursue that which we truly desire. Obese women clearly do not possess the internal fortitude to get off their asses, hit the treadmill, and stop eating pasta and pizza and milkshakes. Fuck you, pasta, pizza, and yeah. milkshakes are awesome. I think we already, we already covered this, too. Yeah! <laughs> It's not that easy for everybody, so fuck you! No rational person can deny that if one was motivated, a big person could lose weight with minimal effort. <laughs> minimal effort! Minimal okay. effort! My ass! Okay. Right. You know, there was always time I was living in Casper, Wyoming for a little while. I worked for Walmart's cart pusher. And you know what? I lost weight because I was running around pushing carts. I'm willing mm -hmm. to bet that if I wasn't doing that, if I had some other thing, I would not have lost the weight the way I did. And you know what cart pushing is? It's it's hard physical work. You know, it's it's not as hard as, as, as like construction work or anything, but it's still hard physical work. You're on your feet constantly. You have to keep moving to keep the carts going in. And of course, you're going to lose weight that way. And I do have the photos to prove it. But, you know, so yeah, it, it, it's not easy. Cart, you know... That, that is the thing. It is not that easy. If it was that easy, everybody would probably be doing it. Mm -hmm. I know. Uh, yeah, like we said, a lot of people have other issues that complicate losing weight. It's not as easy as giving up pasta. Pasta is cheap. Yeah. If you're poor, you're eating pasta five days a week. Pretty much. You know, or, or any other poor, poor, quote unquote, poor person staple if you don't like mm -hmm. pasta. But you know, you you may you may be forced into pasta. You we don't. Get off we don't. Your hit the treadmill. Well, I'm I'm sorry, Mister. Get it going. But I work eight hours a week. Hy this is my hypothetical person. I wake eight work eight hours a week, and I have three kids that I have to pick up from school and tend to the rest of the day and put to bed. And then I go work my second job for another four hours, and then I come home and I have to eat pasta and leftover from yesterday because I put all my money into my kids' school clothes this month, so I don't have any money left over for food for me. And my food stamps only go so far, and I can either get one head of lettuce or I can get six boxes of pasta. So which am I going to get? I'm going to get the six boxes of pasta for my kids. But hey, you're right. Let me just get off my ass and go work out for your benefit so you're not so tortured by my presence of a fatty yeah uh -huh. poor guy that poor guy has to look at the fatty <laughs> poor thing <laughs> <laughs> rather than do this they continue to wallow in their own self-pity and just no longer care about keeping themselves appealing to men it's easier <laughs> after all right Guess what? What if she's a lesbian? And what if she's a lesbian yeah. who's in a lesbian relationship with a woman who happens to like bigger women? Of course she's not going to care about keeping herself appealing, herself appealing to men because she's not looking for a man. And what does this have to do with you appealing to men? I don't, I don't do anything to appeal to men. I live my own life, do my own thing. If I want to appeal to men, I'll go put a little lipstick on, mm -hmm. you know, make an effort at that time. But the vast majority of my life is not catered and circled around, hmm, how can I appeal to men? I haven't shaved my legs since, like, June. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, and no one's going to see them. So, fuck you, yeah. appealing to men. Yeah, I'm not growing out my hair for men. I'm growing out my hair to give two weeks for kids. So fuck you. I don't put on makeup every morning to appeal to men. It's so that I look normal and can cover up my horrible acne scars. Fuck you. Appealing to men. Fuck you. Right. Fuck you. Okay. No. You can't see my fingers. My middle fingers are extended at the screen so hard right now. <laughs> Oh, if, if, if I remember to do so, I've got a, I've got like a little video clip that I got of of Becky one night. Uh, she she just got on her Skype camera and just did like the little middle finger dance because we we were discussing some probably something similar to this article, and she just did the middle finger dance. I got to see about putting that on right there because <laughs> it, it would fit. Oh, number three, they don't value femininity and the power of sexual attraction. This is the sound of my head hitting the desk, by the way. Yeah. 
I know that the obese are subconsciously aware of their condition and that healthy, thinner women are what men naturally are inclined to pursue. Fuck you, I pursue Fuck all you. women. Yeah. By continuing to live in such a sad state, they deny themselves an abundance of benefits that sexually desirable women enjoy daily. Oh, is it like street harassment? Oh, yeah, because, you know, street harassment... All the great benefits that desirable women enjoy, like unsolicited dick pics over the internet, and a mailbox full of, of harassment, and all that fun stuff. Yeah, and guess what? But before I get into his bullet points here, guess okay. what? The, the what? These, these obese women, they endure that too. Just oh, say it. No. Yeah, they do. So Tell me about these all abundance of benefits that sexually desirable women enjoy daily. Yes, happier long-term relationships, as the boyfriend or husband remains attracted to her physically and is less likely to be attracted to other women. If, Fuck you're, you. if your relationship is based on your physical attraction to one another, then you've got a shallow-ass relationship. That's not a happy relationship. Happier long-term relationship. Fuck you, no. boyfriend or husband. I'm not gonna... If me putting on a pound is going to drive him away, then that was not a very healthy relationship to begin with. No, it's just not. Fit women subconsciously draw a man's attention, and we all know women love positive attention. <laughs> I'm going to laugh cry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, okay. I, I will give this... Yeah, no. Women love positive attention. Yeah, as long as it's actually positive. No. You know. Who decides what's positive? What the fuck? What the fuck is wrong with this person? Yeah, uh, it's just, it's just. And I keep using subconsciously wrong too. Mm -hmm. It's like no, if if a woman draws a man's it's attention, it is not the women subconsciously doing this. It is the men looking at a woman and saying, "She's cute. I would like to talk to her, or date her, or kiss her, or bang her." Or marry her. We all know women love positive attention. Yeah, and you know what? Positive attention, that does not mean you cat call and say you have a nice ass baby as she walks down the street. That's not positive attention. Positive attention <laughs> would be, hi, I, I, I like your shirt. It looks very nice. Or, or something along that line. Or, or where did you get your hair done? It looks nice. That sort of thing. That, that's what I'm assuming. For just... No, you're right. It's, you know... Positive attention, but only women, fit women, get it apparently. Hey, guess what? You know, I, I, I've seen these "quote unquote" unfit women that that get a lot of positive attention from me, because not because of not because of their body type. I I, I see it like I, I see dating like a book. The body is pretty much the cover. If if you want to use the cover, you know, to get it, you know, it just shows, hey, this is what this person is. This is how this person looks. That sort of thing, you know. And and you talk to her, you get that small talk. That's like the first few pages or or the overall summary. And then if you decide you want to read the book, i.e., date that person, you go in further. I don't know how well of an analogy that works. I I, I it works. It's, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it, it, I'm it, sorry. I'm still I'm still positive attention. Right. From men. For fit women, because we love it. I I I think I'm broken. Yeah. Mm. Fit women subconsciously draw a man's attention, and we all know women love positive attention. But you know, it a man's attention to a fit woman is not the positive kind of attention. No, it's just because it's on her body mm -hmm. and not on who she is. That is not positive attention. That's like, uh, move on. Let's move yeah. on. Cause... Yeah. Preferential treatment and being looked upon as a higher value person. This is the crux of the problem. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. You look smoking hot. Like, like I'm going to use Miley Cyrus because I'm sure people find her hot. I could take her earlier in terms of attractiveness, but you know, hey, I'm sure she's very nice. Just on on the on the uh, physical level, I could take her or leave her. You know, just because you don't look like Miley Cyrus doesn't mean you're any less worth of a person. You know, just because you look better than Miley Cyrus doesn't mean you are more of a person than her. He's he's essentially saying here that women are only valuable if they're attractive. Yeah. Well, well, okay. If we're gonna take that, then to me. 
basically every woman on the planet is of value to me because I have a very broad spectrum of what I find physically attractive in women. Mm-hmm. So take that with take that as you will. Put that in your hat and say, you know what, you know, people like this guy. He thinks all women are attractive, you know. So if if we're going to go with with the horrible high value person because you are attractive to to somebody, then you know what, I I I hope that 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 brings it up. Even as I say, no, your looks are not dependent on. On, on how you are as a person or what value should be placed upon you as a person. I'm just – I'm thinking about all the, all the women who have contributed so much to the world who are not, you know, yeah. perfect looking. I know, right? It's just – so what? They, they, they did wonderful things and that alone makes them attractive to me at least. Mm value higher value of a person because you're pretty and it's not it's not you know curing cancer Pfft, oh. fatty cured cancer so what big deal get off your ass and go do some push-ups uh, cancer yeah. cure right and it's only uh. it's only a good cure if it's if it's a white man doing it mm. uh, yeah All right. So happier lives through better self-esteem and likewise fewer instances of depression. Today Fuck. I learned obesity is depression. Right. You can't be depressed if you're not fat. Yeah, and you know what? Sarcasm. Yeah, and you know what? I, I really do feel bad for, well, anybody really, be they, be they male, male, female, or otherwise, that, that, that – whether whether they do it on purpose or, or whether they, it's just been conditioned into them, that tie their self esteem to how people perceive them physically. I, I do feel genuinely bad. Gee, I wonder where that comes from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because of assholes like this guy. Is you know so if 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 their self esteem is low and you're tying that to their weight, you are part of the problem. It's just 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 what what is his his name again? Get it going. Get it yeah, going. you are part of the problem, dude. You really are. He's just telling it like it is. Yeah, well, like it is, he is, he he, he could just, I'm moving on. A more positive response in work and other social interactions, as fit, attractive women receive a better response from others. Those others being assholes. Yeah, and very shallow assholes as well. And speaking of assholes, attracting men of high sexual market value. It has an abbreviation. This is a thing. It's an SMV. Sexual market value. And you know what? I'm I'm, I'm going to refer back to one of my ex girlfriends because she would fall under you know she would fall under the 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 fatty heavy set obese category. And you know what? I I you know she and I you know we had our thing, and once that was done. She got married. I, I think, yeah, yeah. This is a girlfriend who who got married and had a kid with a guy. Who this guy would look at the other guy and be like, "Dude, she she is so beneath you. You you you're skinny and and you're buff. Why are you banging her?" So yeah, your it's, sexual it's market really, value thing is just no. It's re- it's really sad to me that that men are brought up this way. Yeah. And it's it's depressing. It I mean, as, as depressing as it is to, to to put this all on women, that men are socialized into believing that women have value and that they're beautiful, and men have value if they bang a lot of hot chicks. It's really screwed up. And 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 oh God. what what gives a man a high sexual market value? That's a good question. To, to, to the red pillars, I'm I'm assuming it's money because they're all fat and ugly and stupid and lazy too. Yeah, Same probably. as the rest of us, because they're normal people, just like women are normal people. It's crazy, yes. yeah, I know. But, but, yeah. Mm. Uh. The way I see it, women are normal people that, you know, besides besides the usual, you know, yeah, be friends with and everything, they're normal people that I wouldn't mind having sex with. You know, it's an activity I would like to do with them. That is not all they are, obviously, yeah. but it is an activity. Them. Yeah. With them, not. Not to uh, them. To them, thank you. Yes. 
Ah, so many times I've seen before and after weight loss pictures in which a woman's looks have easily gone up two or three points by getting back down to an hourglass figure. I'm going to click lost... on that link of before and after, by the way. Go ahead. Yeah. And lost the flabby arms. Look at the men paired up with the big girls next time you go out. Scruffy, frail men with bad clothes or maybe a thin knockoff shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Ever seen a fat girl with a truly handsome man? I haven't unless she was formerly beautiful. <laughs> um, does that count for Roseanne and Tom Arnold? Cause was he attractive? I I don't I I do not possess the 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 uh, set for that one because. What I, about um? Oh, what's her name? The comedian. Um, let's see which one. There's there's Mark. Melissa McCarthy. Maybe I I'm not sure. Her she... husband's not that bad looking. Yeah. And you know there there are plenty of women. I mean, I, I have heard. I, I watched General Hospital for for the Port Charlie podcast, and I don't. I didn't hear it very often, but I heard people commenting about one of the actresses who who just recently left the show, uh, Kimberly McCullough, who you know, and she did noticeably put on a little weight. You know, she's she's not like or anything, but you know, she put on some weight, and it was a little noticeable. And people kept asking, "Is she pregnant? Is she pregnant?" It's like she just put on a few pounds. No big deal. She's still a great actress. She is still gorgeous. If if you want to just look at her only from a, a, a an aesthetic point of view, she is still gorgeous, and there's nothing wrong with her. But people kept asking, "Is she pregnant?" No, she's not. Uh, yeah, Mc Melissa McCarthy's husband's kind of cute. Okay, so he's got a bit of a pedo stash in some of these pictures, but <laughs> pedo stash. Oh god, pedo stash. What? Wait, it's not ugly. Yeah. Uh, I do him. So, number four. <laughs> uh, number four. They voluntarily sabotage their own potential happiness. I'd love to see how he thinks they do this. A more healthy individual does not sabotage their own life. Our behavior is, in many ways, defined by our emotional health and basic emotional needs that we subconsciously desire to fill. In denying themselves a better outward appearance, and hence a better inward persona, see number four above, they create a continuous cycle in which they maintain the status quo and can't escape the bad situation they're in. One does not improve themselves by remaining the same. And you know what? That last line, that is the only one I am willing to give him. Can, can we go back to the beginning and tell everybody to take a drink every time he says subconscious? Um... Well, you know what? Um, <laughs> I, I might actually that might actually be in the description. <laughs> oh my god! He said it again, and it still didn't make sense where he put it in. Well, it yeah. makes a little more sense, but our yeah. behavior is defined by our emotional health and basic emotional needs that we subconsciously desire. All right, I'll give that one to him. Yeah. That use of the word subconsciously. Yeah. Uh, obesity is, with few exceptions. A controllable state, a condition that is maintained and is voluntarily increased or decreased. To allow oneself to continue to be secretly miserable and denying oneself the benefits that are awarded to desirable women surely to me reflects an inner emotional defect. <laughs> uh, I, I channeled film brain for a little bit there. You know, they, I've, I've, I've read stories of, of women who when they were young, they were fit. Mm -hmm. And the attention that they got from men was too much. They couldn't handle it. And they entered into a depression because of this, this attention from all these men off, you know, they'd be like 14, 15 in the beginning, lots of attention from men and they would turn to food to deal with it in order to get fat and be less desirable to disappear, to avoid these so-called benefits. Right. Uh, the, these so-called benefits are not that great. No. If if you can deal with that, the, the, the quote-unquote positive attention from from all these men, great. But it's maintaining your your physical appearance is is it takes a toll in this you know day and age. It takes time and effort mm -hmm. and stress, and you know to to be perfect, and then. Uh, uh, and, uh, it's just it's he's so thick yeah he he's, is. he's he's not viewing these women as people it just 
he's thick and not in the way he would want to be thick, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> to be secret, you can be thin and miserable as easily as you can be fat and miserable. Yeah, I have friends who are thin and miserable. You know, right. You know, one of my good friends, she is – she's she's thin. She has been rail thin before. She's not as rail thin, but she's still thin. And she is miserable for the most part, at least what she puts on Facebook. She mm -hmm. is miserable. So just because somebody is obese doesn't necessarily mean they're automatically miserable. And the reverse is true too. I mean, And there are obese women who are perfectly happy and fine with their bodies. Exactly. They don't give a rat's ass about this jackass's opinion. Yeah. You know, Why would they want to catch a man like this? Honestly, girls, start eating. We need to avoid these assholes. <laughs> We're gonna have an ice cream party at my house. Bring your bring your fat pants. There you we go. will watch. We will watch uh, the Avengers marathon of all the superhero movies with sixty sixty <laughs> dudes all together and eat ice cream <laughs> in our PJs. There you go. And probably make out. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. How the, we'll see where the evening goes. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, number five. They contradict their own femininity. Oh my god! Feed it to the Go ahead. Physically and emotionally healthy woman, her beauty is a part of who she is. Women who con continuously live in a distorted physical state due to fatness are denying themselves who they truly are. What sane person can see a picture of ourselves at 19 years of age, young and in shape, then look in the mirror as a butterball at 34 and not feel the cold hard truth of who we used to be? What is this? He's saying like five different things. What is he trying to say? It, it, this feminine women are only... Skinny? What? And but what does it have to do with who you used to be? What is what does he even All right, you know what? Bigger girls have bigger tits. Tits are femininity, so you know, bigger girls are more feminine. So there. There you go. Oh wait. In... Oh wait. I, I I have let's see. Let's see. My main co host for these shows. Let's see. Yeah. Uh one, two, let's see. Four of them are bigger women, thus they have bigger tits. That means mm -hmm. that means they are more feminine than what this guy yeah. is trying to get to 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 put out there as feminine hmm. uh, this also and it, you know so uh, and and and, 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 and what i mentioned that. before about how he said that uh fatness is undeniably an undesirable attract i mentioned the venus of villendorf it's a famous mm -hmm. uh fertility uh, artifact from way 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 back and it it shows a huge woman she's got this big belly rolling over her 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 legs and she's got this big giant butt all carved out of stone she's got huge tits and these tiny little arms that are holding the, the, the breasts close to her and she's wearing like a, a mask of it, it, a lot of people think it's breasts she's got tons and tons and tons of breasts all over her face and this was the symbol of feminine fertility big giant belly big giant butt big giant breasts there you go that is femininity there you go I, I, I think oh, it's like, all right, everybody else loses. That's it. <laughs> right I mean, there. if you think of, of what is what is a masculine male or a, a form or even an androgynous form, because it, it's androgynous tends to be more masculine feminine. But anyways, a, a masculine form tends to be thin, flat chested, narrow hipped. Yeah. Muscular. Yeah, I think I know. I mean, I don't want to tell skinny women who are flat chested that they are not feminine because you you can be if if your body is not traditionally feminine. Air quotes. There's lots of other ways you can be feminine. Yeah. However, you choose to define femininity, but a a fat girl can be feminine. They don't contradict their own femininity by being voluptuous or fat or obese or whatever word you choose to define yourself. If you, if you want to be feminine, there are a million ways you can be feminine. If you want to be masculine, go for it, too. That could be hot as hell. Yeah. I mean, I mean I've, I've been attracted to women who have stereotypically more, quote-unquote, masculine traits, and that's fine. You know, that, that was, that was kind of hot. I kind of liked it. But, you know, and, and you pretty much said what I was going to try and, and, and uh, cover my own ass with earlier <laughs> is that uh, I do not mean to say that, that, that just because I said that about, you know, most of my co-hosts. That doesn't mean that one other co-host is not feminine at all. Mm -hmm. uh, trust me, she is quite feminine, and in 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 just just femininity is, is not truly defined one way or another. You know, overall, it like like you were saying, it's basically who who what what do you define femininity as? Really, you know, it, it's it's up to you. 
If you see yourself as feminine and you see yourself, you know, embodying femininity, great. More power to you. Don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. Not me, not, not this asshole here, nobody. You know, so, um, oh, we, oh, wow, we gotta, we gotta hurry. We got about five minutes left. <laughs> oh, we're not gonna get the other one. All right, keep going. Okay. As much as feminists would like to rewrite basic human biology, we are animalistic in our need for desirable mates. Being a frumpy ham beast shaped like a giant razor with thick framed reading glasses does not exactly represent the female form. To you, Finger. maybe. Giant finger. <laughs> yeah. When women foolishly and without sufficient inward perspective dress, eat, and behave without feminine traits, they become less identifiable as female, hence, and hence are ignored more by men and looked down upon by other women. If I don't they're look down on anybody. If they're shallow as fuck, if, maybe. Yeah. And the only time I look down on a woman is if she's right below me. <laughs> there, there. Or, yeah. or proves herself to be a jackass despite what her outward appearance is. Yes. You know, you if, if if you're an asshole, you're an asshole. Doesn't matter what gender you are. Or body shape you have. Yes. Assholes come in all sizes. They do. Mm-hmm. Uh, wait. Wait, I come in all sizes. Does that mean I'm an asshole? <laughs> Not at the moment. <laughs> okay, good. <Sorry. laughs> I think I'm pushing that a little too far. I can't make that call. Sorry. That's fine. Uh, number six. <laughs> they latch onto fat acceptance as a psychological coping mechanism. It doesn't take much effort to see the tactics used seemingly everywhere that big women use as coping mechanisms in order to avoid personal responsibility, to project their insecurities onto men or the society scapegoat, or to attempt to divert the source of their personal pains, basically to neutralize reminders of why they are lesser in society. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Project their insecurities onto men? Wow. Um... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to call this, you know, you know a case of uh, pot, meat, kettle, and the first person to call the other black loses. Uh, I did the society scapegoat. Yeah, that, that, that's, I, I don't know if that's accurate, though. Who, projectors, who is telling them that they are worthless unless they are skinny? Project their insecurities onto men. You are doing it. There's, there's no projection. You are making them insecure. You are trumpeting the fact that you're making them feel worthless and insecure and hate themselves there's no projection here you're admitting openly through this entire article that that's what you're doing jesus christ yeah oh my, oh my god yeah and and there's another bullet point in the little thing but i we, we're, we're running yeah. a long time so i'm just going to jump down to their nice. conclusion right in conclusion Fat women who continue to live in denial of their own personal responsibility for their misery typically possess similar traits I've seen over and over. They are not emotionally rational women. They're what? defective. Ugh. Any man or woman, with a few statistically insignificant exceptions, have complete control of their appearance and the resulting SMV and other benefits that come when that appearance is improved. Hence, it defies good sound logic and healthy emotional personal norms to continue to live with a slovenly, overweight, undesirable body. Let them seek out the beta men who are willing to give in to their overwhelming flaws and let them live happily in denial forever. Right. As for the return of King's man, fat acceptance, as Danny McBride said in East Down and Down, fuck that noise. Live happily in denial forever. Yeah. As opposed to living a happy relationship where he will leave you as soon as you put on a few pounds. Uh huh. Yeah. So everybody's fucked, pretty much. Mm hmm. In his in his opinion, okay. Pretty much, yeah. All right. And, and Return Kings. He is a. Everybody's former, fucked. Yeah. It, get it going. It, it, a little bit about him. He's a former small town man, tired of being a nice guy. First sentence. That's all I'm reading from his description. Oh. Uh, well, thank God he's not going to be a nice guy anymore. I was. I was concerned. Yeah, he'd and, be able to keep that up. Yeah, and you know what? They're 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 becoming more like the Republican Party. They're not even hiding it, because mm -hmm. I looked at the top five posts of the week, and number two is you will be banned if you reply to a female commenter. It's like you're not even hiding it anymore, are you? How trigger warnings silence dissent and protect fragile egos. No, that's just ah. being courteous. I admit, I I I I, I the myth of female agency. Oh, God. Holy yeah. crap. Sorry. 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 
is oh yeah so um with that uh, we we've come up on time this week uh so we're gonna get out of here next time i do have another return of kings article that i'm i, I i'm glad we weren't able to get to this week because i really want to save it for holly because i think she will get a kick out of it because <laughs> i know she got a kick out of the uh, slut list we talked about earlier um you know earlier on the show and <laughs> it's just she's gonna get a kick out of this i think right. i hope so at so, least yeah so, so pizza wine and ice cream at my place come on over yes Woo! everybody 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 go to men and women yes yay yay wait, wait if there's pizza and ice cream men and women is there gonna be an orgy maybe sweet and condoms yes oh of course that that, that just just not the just not the Trojan Fire and Ice condoms. I, oh I, my god, I saw those. They put capsaicin in the condoms. Yeah. I, I, I told a friend of mine who, who her partner at the time insisted on using those. I said, I feel so sorry for your vagina. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. And the only reason I know what brand to use, I had to pick some up at some point when I was out. Ugh. Grief. Yeah, so with that with that little bit of awkwardness, <laughs> we're gonna get out of here for this week. Thank you guys for listening. Bex, thank you so much for being on. It was a lot of fun. It was. Thank you for having me. I'm gonna go get drunk now. <laughs> yes. So if you wanna if you wanna find if you wanna find Bex on social media, where can we find her? Uh, I'm at feminemisgeek.wordpress.com. That is my blog, and I'm also on Twitter at femmisgeek, F E M M I S S G E E K. Tweet at me, holla at me, and um, yeah, that's about it. Yes, and she is awesome. You really should follow her. Oh, you. Oh, yes. So, uh, And if you want to find me, you can find me on the Twitters and the Tumblers at Gomer21XX. You can find my stuff on RTGomer.com and Nerdvice.com. And if you like the shows and you want to toss money at me to help make the shows better, get some better production values in, and, and of course, you know, the microphone, it can always use some improvement, just to give an example. Uh, I do have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash gomer21xx, if you feel like you want to toss money at me, and, and all of that to help support these productions, and, and of course, help support the site as well, because we we're, I am looking to upgrade the space on the site as well, in terms of storage space, so I could put, put all my older videos up there without having to worry about YouTube. Um, so... <laughs> With, with with all of that said, I, I afford myself out enough there, I think. Um, but uh, oh, there is there is one other thing. If you uh, pledge twenty dollars or more a month for through Patreon, you do get some ad space on my site, rtgomer.com. And I've I've looked around. It is pretty much one of the best deals you can find on the net. If you want, you know, some cheap, you know, a cheap way to advertise. Uh, well, except for free advertisement, but we gotta we gotta make money somehow here. And I'm also working on open, opening up a cafe press store uh, for Hooray. the site. I'm um, working with my girlfriend, who is an award-winning animator, by the way. <laughs> uh, and, and we're going to be working together on that and getting that set up hopefully soon. Um, so yeah, there'll be there'll be different ways you can you can support the shows and support the site if you so desire and if you have the money to do so. And every little bit helps, and and it does. And I do thank you in advance. And for those who have. I thank you again. <laughs> oh, okay. So, okay. I'm really done whoring myself out now. Uh, thank you guys for Lies. listening. Thank you guys for listening. And until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Bex signing off. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.